Hey Canucks fans, it is Canucks game day. The Canucks are in Chicago to take on the Blackhawks. And let's talk about a few odds and ends. I'm Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, January the 31st. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Thanks to everyone who joined me and joined Lego Rocks for my live stream last night. Close to 1,500 views already. Obviously, you have spoken. You like it when I bring in guests. So stay tuned for a big announcement later this week as to who my next guest is going to be. And I'm actually going to bring this guest on for Friday Night Live. So wait till later in the weekend. You won't be disappointed. I promise you. What was disappointing was the Canucks effort on Saturday night against the Calgary Flames. They looked to right the ship. Time's running out. They only have about, uh, yeah, they're 44 points in 42, 44 games, 500. But they only have 38 games left. And as we continue to watch all these teams that we are battling with for a playoff spot, they continue to win. We need to get back on the winning track. So that's tonight in Chicago, the first of a back-to-back. We have Chicago tomorrow night, Nash- sorry, Chicago tonight, Nashville tomorrow night, and then a week between games. So... No surprise, the goaltenders will split the duties. It will be Halak tonight, and it will be Demko tomorrow night. So let's focus on tonight versus the Chicago Blackhawks. It will be Halak and Net, and it will be the same 6D. So that means Pullman is still out with his mystery illness. Bruce Boudreaux said today that it's not COVID, but Pullman was out, and Hamnick is still injured. The good news is Myers did not get suspended. No more, no additional supplemental discipline after his hit on Trevor Lewis on Saturday night. So he is back in the lineup. So it looks like it will be OEL and Myers, Hughes and Shen, and then Hunt and Noah Juleson as our third pairing. They actually played quite well. Everyone played quite well on on the defense, especially after Tyler Myers' exit after the first period. Now, imagine if Tyler Myers was not playing. Then on your right side, you're left with Shen, Juleson, and then someone else that they'd have to pull up. You know, pull up from Abbotsford. So uh, it's good with Pullman and Hamnick out. It's good that Myers is able to play. Then up front, it looks like it's going to be the same forwards. I don't know if they're going to use the same lines. The same lines would have been Miller, Besser, Podkolzin, then Horvat, PD, Garland, Mott, Lamico, and Highmore. And then your fourth line was um, who was it? It was a Huglander with Dickinson and Chason. So we'll see if Bruce Brujo changes that up given the lack of lack of push from the entire team, but especially from the offense when you only had one one shot in the first period and then you outshot 32 to 15 overall. That simply wasn't good enough. So I'll be very interested to see what how Bruce Brujo lines up his forwards tonight. But in essence, it's the same lineup that played in Calgary on Saturday night, except you have Euro Halak starting in net. That means, in all likelihood, uh, Demko will start tomorrow against Nashville. A couple other things I want to talk about really quickly. Interesting. Jeff Patterson tweeted out this morning that this is Coach Bruce Boudreaux's 20th game with the Canucks already since taking over in the first week of December. And they're 11-4-4. So that is, that's not bad, actually. That's 26 points in 20 games. And that's kind of the pace they're going to have to go at for the rest of the year. 11-4-4. Um, of that 11, 4, and 4, they're 5, 1, and 2 at home and 6, 3, and 2 on the road. So both uh, obviously above 500 records, home and away. 48 goals for, 39 goals against. So that's good. Uh, power play, 23.2%. Penalty kill, 78.3%. So all four of those average goals for, average goals against. Um, actually, I'm not sure what the average goals against, but definitely goals for, power play, and penalty kill all improved under Boudreaux since he's been here for the past seven weeks also interesting news Patrick Alvin joined the Vancouver Canucks in Chicago so what do you call it's first day on the job he's been hired for a couple weeks now or at least a week but his first day with the team I'm sure he's gonna be very busy between today and tomorrow meeting with Rutherford meeting with definitely Bruce Rougeau and meeting a lot of his players and the coaching staff and training staff so Patrick Alvin our brand new general manager joining the team in Chicago. Last thing I want to talk about is trade rumors. And we know, given where the Canucks are, unlikely to make the playoffs, but given that they have some really good players on the team, 
and given contract situations. So all three of those, the fact that they might not make the playoffs, they got some really good players, and we have some unsettled contract uh, situations. We know there's going to be talk every single day from now until the trade deadline near the end of March. And we've talked about the, the usual suspects of JT Miller, a wonderful $5.25 million contract. If he gets traded, you're bringing a big haul back, at least three or four assets. And then the team that gets him gets a really good player for two playoff runs at $5.25 million. For all those reasons, I kind of don't want to trade him. I get the fact that we can recoup a lot, especially while his, his, uh, his value is high. Oftentimes, I think that you overvalue your own players, but I don't think that's the case with JT Miller. But he's kind of like the kind of guy that you want on your team. A solid leader, good on the ice, good in the locker room, plays with a lot of emotion, can play even strength, penalty kill, power play, eat a bunch of minutes, all those things. Sure, you can, you can do without some of his turnovers, but overall, he's a really good player. So that's going to be a fascinating situation to watch. Another fascinating situation to watch is Brock Besser. The end of his most recent three-year contract, still an RFA, so we own the rights. We got to extend a qualifying offer of at least, uh, well, of seven point five million, which matches his last year's salary. Then there's a lot of talk about Connor Garland. Why? Well, he's on a five-year, four point nine million dollar contract. So to get a guy like that, a good second-line player for five million dollars a year, that's a good cost, especially to have that certainty over the next four seasons after this one. So you can see why there might be teams interested in Connor Garland as well. You know, I look past these big ticket guys and we, we I think we'd agree that Demko, Hughes, Pedersen, Horvat are likely the four untouchables. That means no one else is untouchable. Maybe it's more of a middle guy like a Pearson or a Dickinson or a Mott or a Pullman or a Hamnick that gets moved. I wouldn't say My- Myers plays like a middle guy, but he's paid like a top guy, $6 million a year. Not sure how easy that's going to be to move. So all to say, now that Patrick Alvin is truly in the fold officially, meeting his players, meeting his coaching staff, um, I think that he's going to have a much better handle on this team. And you can bet that him and Jim Rutherford will be looking to wheel and deal as the trade deadline gets closer. So Canucks fans, as always, give me a score prediction and give me a first Canucks goal score. Uh, I think after a bad game on Saturday, the Canucks score some. I'm going a 4-1. 4-1 in Vancouver. And I'm saying that it's going to be, because his name has been in the in the trade rumors, the, usually how this works is Connor Garland will score the first goal. So 4-1 Vancouver, Connor Garland scoring our first goal. Leave your predictions down below. Canucks after dark tonight. We're starting a little bit earlier. It's still after dark, but a little bit earlier. So 8 p.m., I invite you to join Parker and me on the Canucks After Dark channel. Shout out to my sponsors, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. Sign up now for a free seven-day trial. Use the link in my video descriptions. And to Van City Experts Real Estate Group, contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. As well, shout outs to my legends, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, hero members, Nux fan number 29, and Carol Bovenlander. Hall of Fame members, Gens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, HSM, Fangirl Gaming, Smooth Move, and Fung Q. Thank you for your support as always. And thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this during my videos or on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. By the way, I think I talked about how good last night's live stream was. I'm not sure if I actually thanked Lego Rocks. Thank Gio for coming on, for bringing his energy, his passion, and his his uh, his overall goodness as a, a as an awesome Canucks and NHL content creator. Appreciate the time and energy that Geo spent with us last night. Okay, friends, subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you like to, become a member or upgrade if you like to, and leave a comment down below if you like to. Score prediction, first Canucks goal scorer. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Enjoy tonight's game. God bless and go Canucks go.